So we said that this excess pressure, the osmotic pressure, which is the excess pressure that is needed to prevent the osmotic flow in the first place, that can either be exerted due to the hydrostatic pressure here from the water column or you could have an external application using a piston. So, so in either cases what's going on is the solvent molecules get sort of get squeezed together under the weight of this water column or under the weight of the external pressure. So as a result there is this tendency for the water to be pushed out from the solution side to the pure solvent side. Because there is this extra flow going from the solution side to the pure solvent side, the net flow from the pure solvent side to the solution side is going to keep going down until it reaches a point where the, the pressure is enough, um, the, the osmotic pressure here is enough so that the flow going from the solution side to the pure solvent side counteracts the flow in the opposite direction. So, so there is no net flow as a result in either directions. So that is when we said it was an osmotic equilibrium. Just wanted to do a quick recap. So the guy who actually did a, a lot of experiments and who first proposed a, proposed a formula for calculating osmotic pressure was this Dutch chemist called Jacobus Hendrikus Wanthoff. Jacobus Hendrikus Wanthoff. So based on his studies, what he found out was the osmotic pressure that he denoted by the symbol pi is directly proportional to the molarity and that is denoted by C of the of the solute which is understandable if you have more amount of solute you can imagine that the the, the osmotic pressure required to counteract the the osmotic flow is going to be higher as well and and he also said that it is directly proportional to the temperature and so he came up with this formula that basically says that the osmotic pressure is equal to CRT and R here is the universal gas constant and it so happens that the proportionality constant here is R as well just as just like an ideal gas law. So, so what what he believed and argued and postulated based on his experiments is that his hypothesis basically was that he actually drew a direct analogy between in osmotic pressure and dilute solutions with the pressure of an ideal gas of the same concentration and temperature. So, so now this hypothesis actually won him a Nobel Prize in 1901. In fact, he was the first guy to win a Nobel Prize in chemistry, but his idea of this analogy was not generally accepted in the years to come. So, uh, so the scientists who came after him began to question his, his hypothesis and understandably so because this is too simplified a, um, a theory to, you know, to compare um, solutions and dilute solutions with, uh, with ideal gas theory. But that, that topic is one whole uh, separate topic of discussion. We can talk about it in another video. But for now, let's stick with this formula here. So you can actually you use this formula for calculating molar masses of or molecular weights of the solute. So you can rewrite this C here as number of moles divided by volume of the solution and that's the molarity and, and then you can rewrite the number of moles as the weight of the solute divided by molecular weight of the solute. So then you'll have something like this. So if you want to find out what this M here is, M equals mass of the solute divided by the osmotic pressure times V times R times temperature. So this is going to give you the molecular weight of the of the solute. So in fact, this technique comes really handy in measuring molecular weights, determining molecular weights of, of proteins and polymers and basically macromolecules, big molecules. Uh, sometimes when you do not know the buildup or the makeup of a particular protein, then you can determine its molecular weight using using this method. And the advantage of this method over other colligative properties, for example, is that first of all, you, uh, you, can, you can do the measurements at room temperature. So if you have polymers or, or proteins that are not stable at high temperature, so you cannot use, for example, the elevation and boiling point as a, as a technique to measure the molecular weight. Also, even with a small amount of solute dissolved in the, in the solution, you can actually get 
uh, significant differences in osmotic pressures, basically big enough different differences in osmotic pressures that will help you distinguish between two different molecules. But again, again, in, in cases of, like for example, elevation and boiling point, we notice that even with a significant amount of solute dissolved in the in the solvent, the the elevation in boiling point or depression and freezing point was not very significant. So this technique comes handy in, in those situations where your solubility is not very high, but you can still use this technique to determine its molecular weight.